In this video, we're going to take a look at the Android Manifest file. Now, the Android Manifest file is a very important file because it exposes information about your app to the Android system. And it's important that you keep everything set up correctly. We'll also be using this file. Uh, many of the features of it are important when you're getting ready to submit your apps and to publish them. So I have a new project open and I haven't done anything to it. So it's just a, a plain brand new project and I set it up for one of the earlier SDKs so it's only 1.5. But this has all of the generated files in here by default. So there's a, a Java file in here and there is the layout main XML file. But one of the other files that's automatically created for you is the Android Manifest. So I'm going to double click on this to open it up and we can just take a look at some of the, the settings in here. So this is the Manifest file and at its core it's XML just like your views are XML. And I'll just pop over here really quickly there's a tab here for Android Manifest XML and you can see that it's laid out in similar format that the main XML file was. And when you're editing this file, you can edit it directly in the XML view or you can go through some of the different tabs and adjust your settings that way. It's all a matter of personal preference. Sometimes it's easier to fill things in, like if you're just filling in the blanks. And other times it might be easier just to go into the XML and just type in the code that you want to put in there. Especially if you're reading resources and examples online and it says to add this to your manifest file and you don't really know where it fits into the scheme of these forms, you can just go into the XML and put the code in there. So you can see here we have the package name that was identified when the app was created, uh, the version code, and the version name. Okay, the version code is the internal version code, and then you have the version name, which is the one that's actually seen by the user. And I'm not going to go into every single one of these options because you'll be coming across them as you go through your development cycle in learning to create apps. If we go to the application tab, you can see that um, this is referring to the label. This is the app name and that information is stored in the strings XML file. So the strings XML holds the information for this. This is the launcher icon that's going to be displayed and you can do a custom icon and we'll be looking at that in um, some upcoming demos. An activity is a single screen in an Android application. So for this example, our main XML is our, this represents our activity screen. We have another upcoming demo that will show you how to create another activity and then we can connect and link one to go to the other. But this would constitute an activity. And that activity is controlled by the Java file. So we have, in this case, the, pro the um, package is manifest demo. So this Java file is what controls the activity for this main XML file. And this main XML file is what our user interface view looks like. So when you have another activity, then you must register it here and you must include it in. So you'll be adding activities either through this screen or going to the XML file screen. There's a permissions tab and permissions will be important because this is where you request certain permissions that your app will need in order to work on a device. So things like if, if your app has to go out onto the internet to, need to use internet access, going out to a web page or linking out. 
and the user is able to see what these permissions are before they install your app. So if you don't have the proper permissions installed, then you won't be able to test it properly. If you need to access the contacts, then you must have permissions set up in here to be able to access contacts. Instrumentation is more of an advanced thing that we're not going to be getting into quite yet in this course, so I'm going to skip that for now. And then you've seen the Android Manifest XML version of the file. So again, you can work back and forth between these different tabs and putting in different settings, and you can also go directly into the XML, all depending on what your preference is. Uh, but it's an important file we'll be coming back into here when we look at taking your app and preparing it for distribution within the markets and for sign and for code signing your, your app before distributing it. So this is really a descriptor for your application and all of the other components that will run with your application.